Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, this is the fifth video in the mathematical modeling video series. And in the previous video, we discussed uh, a model called the SI model, which uh, we used to, mo to you know, start modeling a disease. So in today's video, we're going to be discussing how you can model the spread of a rumor, right? Over the past few years, especially since WhatsApp has become a big deal, we have seen, you know, uh, increasing reports of how uh, there are these forwards which are being circulated in WhatsApp and it contains wrong information and they're misinforming people and all of that. So how does a rumor or misinformation or wrong information spread amongst a community? That's roughly the idea with which we're going to be approaching today's video. So we're going to be using the SI model, which we learned in the last video. And if you haven't seen the previous video, I highly recommend that you see it because you'll need to understand what we discussed there to you know follow today's video. I'll leave a link right here and you guys can check it out. So before we get started, we'll just quickly look at what the SI model spoke about and how we can use it for an entirely different application, which is, you know, uh, to tackle the spread of rumors. So in the previous video, we spoke about how the SI model is used to model disease dynamics, right? How, of, how a, how, of how a disease spreads. So we said there are two compartments. There's the S compartment and there's the I compartment. S consists of the susceptible population which is the people who are prone to getting a disease and I consists of the infected population, which is people who, who actually have the disease right now. And then we discussed how uh, we are first dealing with diseases where there is no cure or people don't recover. It's like once you get the disease, you have that disease for a lasting period of time. So basically you can't, once infected, you will stay infected. Basically that's uh, where we started with in the previous video and that's what this model represents. So we spoke last week about how beta is the transmission rate of the disease, basically the rate at which the disease spreads between uh, people. If you're talking about human to human transmission, uh, the rate at which it spreads. And N we discussed is the total population. That's S of T plus I of T is equal to N at any instant of time. So it's a constant population. The population is not growing uh, is what we discussed. So now how can we use this model to you know, discuss or model uh, the spread of a rumor or fake news. So that's what we're going to be looking at today. So what we're going to do is we're going to see how we can form an analogy or, you know, form our own similarities between a disease uh, spreading and a rumor spreading. So if you think about it, the susceptible population which exists and the infected population that exists, these are the two compartments that we spoke about, right? So you could think of, think of this susceptible as people prone to receiving the the rumor, right? People who who are prone to you know receiving the rumor, and you can think of I as people who believe and help propagate the, the rumor. So basically, if you think about it, initially when a rumor starts, like we've all, you know, experienced or faced rumors being spread, be it in college about, let's say somebody just says, oh, this class is canceled. And even though you didn't get an official mail, some of us believe it, don't go to class. And that's just a rumor spreading. Maybe somebody was playing a prank. We don't know why the rumor is being spread, but it just is, right? So when you think about it that way, there are some people who believe that particular rumor and they help in propagating that rumor to other people. So th those can be thought of as analogous to the infected population in a disease, right? So because the infected population are those people who essentially convert the susceptible to infected, who can basically propagate that disease. It's the same with the rumor. So the people who are infected with that rumor or basically believe that rumor and are helping to propagate it. Now, there are people who don't know about this rumor yet, you know, who are innocent and have no clue about this. But once somebody tells them, you know, once an infected person, once a person who believes the rumor comes and tells them that rumor, the susceptible people have a high chance of, you know, believing it basically. So if you think about it, it's when it comes to a rumor spreading, it's not black and white, right? Some people who uh, 
uh, are being told a rumor not all of them will believe it right only a proportion of them will believe it maybe some of them won't believe it and be like no no you're lying i don't believe you and stuff like that so if you think about it it's a very complex thing to model so using the si model we are going to model it on a very basic level with a bunch of assumptions and as we move forward in this video series and once we introduce more and more models we will you know get rid of those assumptions and form an extremely general model and in fact i have uh, made an extremely extremely big uh, model that um, you know that is used for uh, basically studying the spread of fake news which i will discuss at um, you know a bit later on so i'll show you how i modeled it based on some research that i had done as well so but to get started with you know for now we have discussed what the s and i terms would mean in uh, you know the spread of a rumor so i hope that's clear so now the next thing we can think of is okay how to model it so in the previous you know si model we we the model was as follows right ds by dt was minus beta si by n and di by dt was plus beta si by n so this means that there is only somebody who's prone to getting the wrong information and somebody who already has the wrong information so the assumptions that we have made here are important for the rumor spread model so again beta is nothing but the rate at which an a person who believes that misinformation can propagate it right it's you can think of beta as the rate of propagation of the you know news or the rumor whatever it is that's what beta is in this case s is the s is basically the population of people who who are not yet exposed to that uh, you know wrong information but they are prone to getting infected with that wrong information and i basically represents the population of people who are aware of that wrong news and are actively helping in propagating it so now you might say that okay what if after some point of time you know some people some of the infected people uh you know they believe that wrong information but after some time they uh, reach a point where they're like no no i don't believe this uh, you know news anymore i have realized uh, that it's false information and so i will no longer help propagate it it's possible right that's what happens in fact like you may believe a particular piece of information then after some point of time you're like mm, no no i don't think this is true anymore so i won't uh, propagate this anymore but at the same time you know i may not be able to verify whether it's true or false so i'll just stay away from it and i don't want any part uh, you know in the whole you know rumor spread of the rumor i'm just going to stay away from the whole issue there are, there are people who do that so how do we model that effectively because if you think about rumors that's a very important aspect right because there are some people who you know decide that no this i don't know whether this is right or wrong and i don't want to be involved in it anymore let's just you know take a step back and you know stay away from the whole you know controversial issue so how do we model that that's what we're going to look at today and it's important to understand this because this uh is going to pave a very important aspect in disease dynamics as well which we will deal with in the next video so if you think about it people who are infected with that wrong you know news and decide that oh yeah i i no longer know whether this is right or wrong but i just want to stay away from it i don't i don't want to actively be involved in this issue at all i just want to stay away from the whole thing so the way to think about it is that um i'm just going to rub this off and i'm going to explain what i mean so there is some s population there is some i population and there is some i'm going to call it r and i'll tell you why it's called r in just a moment so these are the susceptible people these are the infected people and r represents recovered okay so what i mean by recovered in this particular model is people who no longer want to take a part in you know Uh, the whole rumor and they want nothing to do with it they're just going to stay away from the whole controversial issue and be like if people believe it let them spread it if people don't believe it it's fine i mean i we, re we really don't care about it so those are the people who come in record people who don't care about the whole issue anymore so with our model we have minus beta si by n going out and we have plus beta si by n going in 
Now, after some point of time within this infected population, some people are going to be like, no, no, I don't believe this anymore. So let's just stay away from the issue. So, and now let's say that some alpha i, I'll, I'll tell you what alpha is. Alpha is the rate at which So basically alpha is the rate at which people lose interest in the issue that's you know being discussed. So let's say it's some fake news about, um, uh, I don't know, let's say some actors, something, some, some Bollywood news, let's say. It's very likely that after a couple of hours, people will be like, yeah, I don't really care about what this actor is doing. Why does it influence my life? So I'm not going to partake in this whole issue at all. But at the same time, if it's a very relevant issue, let's say if it's about exams in your college and the pattern of exams, and there's just a rumor going around, even though people might be skeptical about it, they will still want to be involved in the thing, right? You're still going to discuss with your friends and by discussing with your friends, you're still propagating it. You're not staying away from the issue. You're actually within the issue. So alpha is the rate at which people lose interest in the issue. And therefore those are the, I mean, alpha into I, the, that's the number of people uh, who decide that yeah, I don't want to be part of this whole discussion anymore. I don't really care. It doesn't influence me. So I'm just going to stay away. I'm going to be recovered from this whole uh, rumor nonsense and just stay away. And I don't really care. So this is minus alpha i and plus alpha i. Now, this is a very simple term that I've taken alpha times i, right? So that's the rate at which people lose interest. You could mon model it in a more complicated manner. You could say, yes, it also uh, has uh, depends on other factors. You could add add in some time factor. So you could say that uh, this rate alpha, the rate at which people lose interest, it's uh, time dependent. So as uh, let's say in the first 30 minutes, alpha will be low. Uh, from 30 minutes to one hour, alpha will be high. And uh, from one hour to two hour, alpha will get higher. So basically as time goes on. So basically as this rumor is being introduced into some population, as we're going ahead with time, more and more people will lose interest. So the rate at which people lose interest will go higher. Basically, that's what that's another way to model it. But for now, we won't complicate matters. We will deal with such things later on. But for now, I just want to introduce the whole concept of what a recovered population generally means. So now if you think about it, the model would now actually become as follows. So now because of the new added terms, the now the model now becomes this. And what this means is now that uh, we have three equations which describe the model before we had only S and I now we have S, I and R. And this is popularly called the S, I, R model. And this is a very, very common model in disease dynamics, but I just wanted to show you how it can be used for things other than diseases as well. I will deal with the disease dynamics concept in detail in the next video and go build further from the SIR model as well. But in this video, we're just talking about rumors. And now I've introduced the concept of how some people just lose interest in the issue and they're like, okay, let's just stay away. I don't care. And I'll tell you why this matters and why I'm wording it in this, you know, very specific manner. So these set of people, right? Alpha I they are no longer susceptible to the news. That means they've entirely come out of the whole, you know, spread of the rumor. So they can't influence anybody else to recover and neither can they influence anybody else to get infected again. Correct. So that means they've come entirely out of the SI. So the susceptible infected dynamics, the, these alpha times I people have just directly come out of it and they're like, okay, we will recover. We don't bother. We are not going to help other people also recover. At the same time, we're not going to spread the news also. We're just staying away for our own sake. That's all. They're just selfish and they care about themselves and they're just staying away. And this happens in real life as well. So that's an important aspect to understand. Now, to summarize, so we used an SIR model for the spread of, the, uh, of a rumor where S and I have some dynamics between them and from I, and I and R has some dynamics between them in the sense that you can go from susceptible to infected and from infected to recovered. You can't go back 
to susceptible from here this is we have not dealt with that that is possible right some people after some point of time again become skeptical and they can become susceptible to the rumor again they might think oh is it possible that this is true maybe it's possible maybe i should rethink about it so some people who who are recovered or who are out of the issue might put themselves back into the issue again for various reasons but we have not considered that aspect here okay and we've also not considered the fact that some people who are infected they may go back to susceptible directly in the sense that they don't believe that the rumor is true uh but at the same time they are they are like doubtful they don't believe the rumor but they have some sense that okay it might be true so they are in that phase where they are thinking about it right so that you have to, it's important to understand what the difference between susceptible population and recovered population is that's what i'm trying to say so the recovered population can no longer be infected by that fake news they can no longer be you know made to believe some fake news they are entirely out of it they're like bye bye we don't care about this issue just they have they just put a wall there and that's it nobody can contact them again think of it that way but a susceptible person can still be infected with that disease again so it's also possible that some infected people after a point of time they are confused about the issue so they're not going to help propagate it but at the same time they're not going to be recovered also so they just go back to the susceptible population these are all different aspects to think about and we will deal with all of these aspects in detail and if you're getting confused right now i highly recommend that you jot down the assumptions for each model and try to think for yourself what each model represents and if you have any you know doubts as to whether this particular model incorporates some particular assumption just drop a comment and i will get to it as soon as i can so now finally we dealt with the si model where somebody would get infected and stay infected forever and now we dealt with the sir model which is essentially some uh, you know percentage of the infected people get recovered and they have permanent recovery in the sense that they are permanently recovered they don't care about the issue they have detached themselves from the whole thing so now in the next video we're going to be dealing with something called seir model and this the introduction of this model has changed disease dynamics in an ex extremely wide way like it's made disease dynamics an entirely different field with so many new you know topics and so much so much so many new inventions being made in that field so this is what we'll be dealing with in the next lecture and it's super super important so i highly suggest that you you know read up a bit about si and sir models and if you have any doubts make sure you drop a comment so yeah i hope you enjoyed this small video on how you can use the si and sir model for modeling uh the spread of rumors and what assumptions we make and stuff like that in the next video we'll be dealing with seir model and after that what we're going to start doing is we're going to start building our own models in depth and we're going to have very few assumptions and the models can get compli complicated but we will you know deal with that in um a particular way how will we choose to decide but for now yeah thank you so much for watching and um, yeah i'll see you next time thank you